Hey guys, as promised, you guys have reached 150 likes within 24 hours, so here is the video. Today we'll talk about the Churchill Heavy Tank, hope you guys will enjoy the video. So like I said, today we'll talk about one of the most well-known British tank. The Churchill has served in the military from 1941 up until 1952. It had 8 different marks and the Churchill was approximately built 5640 times. Which for a heavy tank is actually quite a lot, so let's put this into perspective. The IS-2 from the Soviets has been built 3854 times and the Taiwan has been built 1347 times. To say this in an easier way, the IS-2 and the Tiger one both have been built combined less than the Churchill. The Churchill was meant to replace the Matilda II and the Valentine in the Rolls infantry support tank. To explain quickly what an infantry support tank is, it is a tank which has a lot of armor to be able to work under heavy fire together with the soldiers. This armor came at the expense of speed, which wasn't a big deal considering foot soldiers weren't exactly quick either. Obviously, because there are such a massive amount of different marks in such a short time, most of these will have different modifications. But let's start with the main armament. The Mark 1 and the Mark 2 had a Q of 2 pounder. The Mark 3 and the Mark 4 had the Q of 6 pounder. The Mark 6 and 7 had the 75mm, and the Mark 5 and 8 had the 95mm howitzer. The Churchill was actually a shorter Virgil than you might imagine. The Churchill was only 7.4 meters long. 3.2 meters wide and almost 2.5 meters tall. This allowed the tank to be able to fit 5 crew members in there. The crew members were the commander, the gunner, the loader, the driver and the machine gunner. The machine gun fitted to this tank was a 7.92 mm Besser machine gun to deal with infantry and light armored vehicles. And the Mark I had a secondary armament of a 3 inch howitzer. The Churchill had a Bedford engine which produced 350 horsepower which allowed the tank to go 24 km an hour. And it has an operational range of 90 km which isn't a lot. Also when it comes to these different marks it also had a lot of different armor thicknesses. Sadly I cannot show an image of these armor thicknesses but the Mark 1 to 6 had a 102 mm front hull, 76 mm side, 51 mm rear hull, 89 mm front turret, 76mm rear turret, while the Mark 7 and 8 had a 152mm front hull, 95mm hull sides and 51mm hull rear. Now we come to the fun part, operational history. The Church of first saw combat on the 2nd of August 1942 in the Deeper Raid in France. This was planned long before August 1942. Operation Rotter was to involve 6000 Canadian troops and several company commandos. The force was meant to test out German defenses and learn about landing operations. Sixty Churchills of several types took part in these landings, including three flamethrower version, a bomb inversion, demolition and bridging vehicles. The operation proved to be a failure for a number of reasons. It is a common myth that the Churchill tanks were stuck on the beach and could not cope with the shingle of the beach. Most of the Churchill tanks did get off the beach, but could not get past some of these concrete tank traps. The few that could not get off the beach had their tracks clogged or broken by pebbles. The reason most of these Churchill tanks ended up on the beach at the end of the raid is because they were called back to be taken off. Because of enemy fire, the landing craft could not get near the beach to take them off. The Churchill tanks that were knocked out were hit on the tracks or suspension system. They could not move and were abandoned by the crew. The German 37mm puck and the French 75mm guns had difficulty penetrating the Churchill tanks armor. Only one of these tanks was armored or penetrated. When the Churchill began to arrive in mass in North Africa, the second battle of Al Alamein has been won and the German forces were on the run to the west, to Tunisia. At the same time, the US and British forces landed in French Algeria and Morocco creating a giant pincer movement for the retreating Africa Corps and what remained of the Italian divisions. Marshal Kesselring was sent to Tunisia with massive reinforcements, including the German brand new beast, the Tiger. The Churchill 3 and 4 equipped with their 6 pounder guns were no match for it, but proved with their tremendous protection and superior crossing abilities on many occasions. Tunisia had a very mountainous terrain, and over it the Churchill could climb up the slopes which were deemed impassable for tanks, and so could provide infantry support where it was needed, often in areas where the enemy didn't expect it. On one occasion, a Churchill scored a lucky hit in the third ring of a Tiger tank, jamming the third. 
The crew hastily deserted it, leaving the Tiger as a prize. It was invaluable for the British intelligence and stands now at the Boffington Tank Museum. With its reputation re-established, the Churchill was massively involved during the whole Italian campaign. The main reason for this was the terrain, favoring infantry, which in turn needed a sturdy tank support, able to deal with the difficult terrain. The Churchill was first in line for this task. The specialized versions of the armored engineers were vital for the entire 8th Army and many other Allied forces operating in Italy. The experience gained here also paved the way for better versions, which were massively engaged in Normandy. Most of these modified NA-75 saw action there. Their range and efficiency were far better than those of the standard Germans, due to the fact that the Churchill was a sturdier and more stable platform. Many specialized virgins took part in the landing of the Normandy beaches, with the mine flail and the bullshorn blue versions, the bobbin versions, even salvage model Churchills. And the Churchill was also invaluable in sandy terrain. The Averies dealt with the fortifications of the Atlantic Wall, which had been missed by the planes. The excellent motricity of the Churchill was proven once more in Operation Blue Coat, with capturing a key point, Hill 304. They also saw heavy fighting in the Low Countries. On the Rhine border, equally fortified, the Churchill again proved to be highly efficient, especially with the arrival of the Mark 7, impervious to most of the German anti-tank guns. The Churchill was also delivered to the USSR via Land Nice. A total of 301 Mark 3s and Mark 4s were shipped via Murmansk. The most memorable action occurred at Kursk when the 5th Guard Tank Brigade successfully counterattacked at Porokovka. The Russians appreciate the good mobility in the large tracks of this vehicle and the excellent protection comparable to the KV-1. Less well known, a few churches were also sent to the Australian forces operating in New Guinea at the end of the war. By mid-1944 it was tested alongside the Sherman, with the Matilda already in service as a reference. The Australians eventually chose the Churchill, which was found to be very efficient for jungle warfare. However, only 46 of the 510 ordered ever reached the ANZACS, as the order was cancelled at the end of the war. The last engagements of the Churchill came in Korea in 1915. A crocodile squadron took part in the third battle sale. Later on, four Churchills decisively supported the defense led by the 1st Battalion, helping to maintain the Allied position there. The regular Churchill was retired from service in 1952, while special versions like the bridge layer were still active in duty until 1970. My opinion. Keep in mind this is just my opinion, so feel free to leave your opinion as well in the comment section down below. I'd love to read what you guys think on this tank. When I was younger, I always played those games like World of Tanks and War Thunder, and this is also the reason why I grew up to love eventually these armored fighting vehicles. But I never really liked the Churchill, because it had a very weak gun, and aesthetically it didn't look so good. Even when seeing the AVR reversion in real life, I stand by this opinion. However, when reading about the service history, it slightly did do change my opinion, for the better. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like. We got a video here on the left about the Centurion and a playlist here on the right, probably the tank one. Be sure to check that out and other than that, have a very good day.